Hello everyone and welcome back to more Instruments of Destruction. We're going to be playing sandbox mode today. And in the last episode we built this really dinky cannon thing trying to fit the budget. But today we're going to build something absolutely ridiculous trying to make a more powerful cannon. So the first thing of course we have to do is lay out a nice base. And to hold the base down we use these heavy feet. Perfect. Once we've got a base set up, the next thing is to build just a little spot where we can put a cannon on top and just do some basic testing. Now I tried out the small cannons in the last episode and they weren't really that powerful. They don't even really make it to the building. So I figured let's put a large cannon on it instead and see what this is. Hadn't checked the large cannon yet, but it's even worse than the small cannon, except the actual cannonballs explode. But if we could actually get that large cannon to go faster and make its way all the way to the building, then we could have it explode on the building. So of course I looked through the parts and found this magnet part. Now the magnet part allows us to both attract and repel objects, including cannonballs. So all we gotta do is just make a little attachment point and put a magnet in behind the cannon. And we should be able to propel the cannon a little bit faster just by having the magnet repel constantly. But you can see it doesn't really go that much further so we're going to need a few more magnets. But it's definitely better than it was before. Now if we look through the parts, we have this thing called an overdrive, which makes parts more powerful if you attach it to it. So we can put an overdrive down and then put a magnet onto the overdrive. And that should make the repelling force of the magnet way more powerful. It still doesn't even have enough to make it to the building. I mean it does if it rolls across the ground, but it's not actually hitting the building as a projectile. It's just sort of rolling there. Uh, but it still works. The building does collapse. And apparently the tower. Now I think everyone knows what the obvious solution is, which is of course place more magnets on it. And if we have more magnets, it should amplify the force and thus give us more speed on the projectile. So I figured let's just throw nine magnets on this and have them all set to repel. And it should be perfect. so powerful that it actually can cause the projectiles to make the vehicle flip. So we're going to need some weight on the vehicle, but we also should just put more magnets to see if we can accelerate even faster with that projectile. So we've expanded it out to this 9x7 array of 63 magnets, all with overdrives. And if we check the power now... You can already tell this is ridiculous. It seems like there's enough speed with the projectile to cause damage even without the explosion. So we're going to have to of course bump this up and see how much more powerful it can actually get. So of course the next logical thing is to just put more magnets and make another layer of magnets. Luckily we can have the magnets overlap into each other slightly so we can make this relatively compact. And we'll just make another layer the exact same size as this layer. And so doing this, we actually bring our magnets up from 63 up to 126 magnets, all repelling the cannonball. Now, of course, the further magnets in behind are not going to be as close to the cannonball, but they should still get the job done. Still not powerful enough, so of course I feel like you know what direction this is going to go in. So of course we built a third layer for this, and while I was building the fourth layer, we ran into the problem where there is an actual part limit on this game apparently. So we're going to have to delete some of the magnets in the final layer, and then of course free up some more parts, because we still need to put some treads on this thing to actually move it around as a vehicle so we can aim our cannon. So we're just going to reduce it a little bit, and then of course fill in the magnets as best as we can. Now, of course, we're up to something like 237 magnets with a vehicle cost of about, you know, 1.6 million. The standard level cost is about 25,000, but you know, this makes sense. And of course, if we fire the projectile now, it should have an incredible launch speed. Unbelievably powerful cannon. 
So of course, we just gotta add some finishing touches, like some treads. I also added some pistons on the front treads to lift them up so we can aim our cannon up and down. But it's a pretty simple vehicle. We can rotate left, rotate right, and of course, tip our pistons in the front up to, you know, make it go up and down. But now we can actually move around and aim our cannon and it is just a wonderful piece of machinery. To increase the accuracy, I used the last two parts to just put a spike on the back. So I figured the only thing to do after that was to bring it to some levels. Uh, of course, we're here on the first level, and it's a little too big. It just wants to slide into the water. Trying to shoot the tower, we cannot get out of the water at all. A few attempts later at trying to get a hold of this level, I realized it's just, it's just flat up not gonna work. Luckily, the next level had a little bit more space, and unfortunately, there wasn't any space to drive into the level, but there is space to shoot these towers from a distance, and of course, this is a sniper robot. This thing is absolutely insane. It launches a projectile so fast, it doesn't even have to explode on the tower, it just knocks it over with straight kinetic energy. And of course, gives us an insane amount of recoil. I discovered on this next level that it turns out you don't really need to use magnets for a gun at all. If there's objects like crates or explosive barrels on the level and you turn on the magnets, everything just sort of disintegrates. Haven't fired the cannon once, everything's already gone. It just, it just becomes particles. This thing has so many magnets, it just completely obliterates everything. So seeing as how that was super effective, I figured we'd try it on the next level as well. I just turned on the magnets and already the telephone poles are just, they're just exploding. They just disappear. That one took out a whole wall with it. And then there's just, it, you know, it's a problem. Once one little bit of debris comes, it destroys all the rest of the debris. And we can just suck it in and just shoot it all out. And the entire level disappears. It's just, it's just gone now. Amazing. Moving on to the next level, I figure we just turn on the magnets again, suck everything into the vehicle, and then shoot it all out. Of course, enjoying the three frames per second PowerPoint presentation while we're at it. But it just completely obliterates absolutely everything with zero effort. We don't even need to shoot the gun for this level. Now, this level seems like it was designed for this kind of vehicle. We have a nice little starting island, but we're unable to make it across the bridge. However, we do have some huts that we can snipe with our incredible sniper rifle. This final one was a little bit of an issue simply because there were some power lines in the way. And for some reason, the projectile still wanted to bounce off that pillar even though it was clearly shooting straight through it. And look at that. Completely obliterated, even at a crazy distance. This thing's amazing. Of course, I tried to take it over the bridge and that just didn't work at all. This level had a series of towers to deal with. That first tower just gets eaten. We're gonna snipe the rest of the towers though, pretty easily. Sometimes you just need to use a few more cannonballs. Once again, another level where simply turning on your magnets is a terrible idea. Apparently the magnets just don't have a range. They attract everything from everywhere. And when you have this many of them, it doesn't even matter. And then we can just walk into this building and the building will just go away. Of course, sometimes I realize this vehicle is just too large for its own good. I don't know what happened here. I guess a giant piece of telephone pole cause us to fly up into the air, but luckily we've got enough recoil that if we fire fast enough, we can in fact fly. And of course obliterate the entire map in the process. Of course, for the final stage, I figured I would spawn into one of the structure zoos, which has a lot of different buildings to obliterate. They all seem to fall the exact same way, where it doesn't even matter if you hit the base of the building or the middle. The cannonball just has enough power to obliterate everything. Even buildings that are too short somehow still die. Make sure, of course, if you guys like this video, to let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. 
definitely got other ideas for things to build in Instruments of Destruction. But this was just a really cool build. So let me know what you think and we'll see y'all next time.